Hey folks, it's October once again, and so I've got a little combination Halloween and 3D scanning project to take on. The folks at RevoPoint sent along another little toy to test out. It's their dual axis turntable that uh, goes with their 3D scanners. Now, as you may have realized by now, I'm a fan of the classic Aurora Monster model kits from the 1960s. And uh, this one is called The Forgotten Prisoner. It's a skeleton rotting away in a dungeon. And uh, I thought that it would be really cool to have his skull life-size that I could, you know, just put up on my shelf. So this, um, this kit actually came uh, from a company called Atlantis Models. And uh, it came as a glow-in-the-dark kit, so it came with a second set of a lot of the parts in glow-in-the-dark plastic, which is very cool, but I didn't use it for the build, and so I actually had a second skull, uh, brand new, unfinished, um, that I figured I could scan these parts on the RevelPoint dual-axis turntable, and uh, blow them up in the computer, do a little fussing, and 3D print it full size. Obviously, you're looking at the results. It turned out just fine, um, but I'm gonna take you through the process of how I did it and uh, how this uh, dual axis turntable worked out, which I would say it worked out pretty well. Now, this turntable is designed as sort of an optional upgrade to the standard turntables. So the basic turntable that you can get is just one that constantly spins around at a slow and even speed so that your scanner can pick up the details. And well, the trick with these is that the scanner likes kind of a smooth, even movement um, so that it has an easier time keeping track of where the subject is in space. Now, when you scan something on a regular turntable, you can't get all of the information from a single position of your scanner to the turntable. So say that's what we're scanning and that goes all the way around. Well, it hasn't really been able to get what's directly on top. And a lot of time it's not able to get what's kind of underneath from a single position. And so what you end up having to do is repositioning your scanner and getting a rotation like this and putting it down lower and getting another rotation like that in order to build the full picture of the object in 3D space. What's really clever about this dual axis turntable is that it sort of flips that and um, it rotates the turntable into different positions instead of the um, scanner. So your scanner stays put and your turntable will do one programmed rotation flat like this and then it'll tilt towards the scanner and do another rotation at that angle so that it's actually kind of now looking more towards the top of the object. And then it'll tilt away from the scanner and do a rotation from that angle so that it's looking up underneath the subject. And in that way, it's able to build the whole picture with uh, you not having to uh, fuss with it during the scan. Um, like anything with 3D scanning, there's still some trial and error involved. Um, you gotta kinda get a feel for what works with different um, objects and just in general with, with the scanner. Um, this Mini is the one that they recommend this turntable for, and the Mini is really good at getting detail, but it's only got about that big of a um, space that it scans at one time. So that's where a small object like this is really perfect. So here's what the scanning process with the dual axis turntable looks like. Um, we start our scan and then we need to make sure that we've checked off the turntable option and then we get this window with the options for how the turntable is going to work. So first thing you have to do is turn on the turntable and connect it via Bluetooth to the scanning software. And then you've got some different uh, parameters you can adjust for the angle that it's going to tilt to with each rotation and how fast it goes. I've just left all of these at the defaults um, and it seemed to work really well for me. 
Now when I'm ready to scan, I just go ahead and click the play button. It does a little countdown and then the term table takes over from there. So it's going to do its first rotation, tilt, do a second rotation, tilt the other way, do the third rotation, and then stop the scan, which is great. Now you can see that as it's scanning, it's kind of getting these double images of the skull where there's kind of overlapping versions of it. That's okay to see at this point because the next step is going to uh, align the point cloud that it's created in the scan and try to match those up into one single object. And now that it has aligned, everything looks good. It's condensed all of those points into one image of everything. You can see that it's also scanned the marking dots and the little base that I built up for this goal to stand on, and that's okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and generate the mesh now. And the mesh looks great. You can see there's those um, blobs around the dots. Um, that's because I checked off fill holes, which is a nice option that if there's any gaps in the scan, it'll just kind of correct those over. So that's okay. I'm just going to delete those when I get it into ZBrush later, but that looks great. Now I'm going to go ahead and scan the back of the skull. So same thing, I checked off, I'm going to use the dual axis turntable. I'm going to connect the dual axis turntable, confirm my settings, and start the scan. Now this particular scan is actually one that didn't work out. And I'm going to keeping this in here to show you what some of the troubleshooting can look like with the 3D scanning sometimes. So you see here it's generating a lot of multiple images of that piece and um, I can kind of get the sense right now that it might have some trouble merging those together. And sure enough it actually got most of that aligned really cleanly but there's just this secondary piece of the skull on there so I'm just gonna try this again and this time I'm gonna add some little blobs of clay just kind of irregular shapes around the object that I'm scanning to try to help the software align it in space. So I think what happened the first time is that because the back of the skull is almost just a half sphere, there's not a lot of registration uh, topography for the scanner to latch onto to understand where it is in space. And so this time by adding some physical features next to it that are definitely easier to track. Um, it's getting a much cleaner scan this time, much more consistent. It's not losing track of where it is. And sure enough, when I fuse these together, um, I'm getting a really good scan. No double images. Now, I have to give Revelpoint a lot of credit here because they seem to be consistently making updates to their software. Since I started using their scanners about a year ago, a lot of the issues with um, tracking the model as it's being scanned have gotten a lot better with every update that they put out. Um, the Mini was originally didn't seem to work on the newer uh, Apple Silicon Max, and now it does. Um, the Dual Axis Turntable as well has already had a software update that um, gives you some more control over it. Uh, it's not available yet on the Mac um, while I'm recording this. Usually it seems like the Mac updates come about a couple weeks to a month after the Windows updates, which is normal. Um, but for um, you know all of the difficulties that this technology has, especially being very new to the sort of consumer market. Um, they seem to be pretty on top of it and they seem to be really trying to make it better. And it seems like every couple months or so, there's a new update to the scanning software and um, things get a little bit better every time. So I went ahead and exported both the front and the back of the skull as STL files and brought them into ZBrush. And this is what the actual scans look like. Now. I'm going to be enlarging this 800%.
So I need to really kind of enhance all of that detail to make it read well when it's printed out. So I've gone through with ZBrush and corrected a lot of that. And now this is the 3D print. I'm printing this on the Frozen Sonic Mega, which is a really big resin 3D printer that's gonna give me the detail and the size that I need for this. You can see here is the final print and uh, all those extra holes that you see around the edges, uh, most of them are gonna get covered up and the other ones I'm gonna patch over. Those were there to allow the excess resin to drain out. But the print came out great, so just a little bit of sanding and some primer and I'm gonna put on the base coat of paint and then I'm gonna go ahead and start painting with acrylics. Um, I wanted to put at least the little bit of paint on the inside um, because once I glue these together, it's gonna to get harder to get in there. Um, but a little super glue to hold the two halves together. The seam doesn't have to be perfect because that's how the original kit is. And then a uh, little, uh, little paint work later, here we are. So ultimately my opinion on the dual axis turntable is that it's actually quite a nice accessory. I don't think that it's something that you absolutely have to have in order for your Revopoint scanners to work well, but I think that being able to set something on there, start the scan and not have to be intimately involved in the scanning angles and the process as it's going and that it's just going to start and stop when it's done is a really nice feature um, that previously was uh, not possible with these. So if you're using the mini and you're going to be scanning a lot of objects that are kind of the perfect size to go on there, the perfect size for the view angle of the mini, then I think it's a great option and I'm definitely going to be using it on more of my projects in the future.